My name is Dan Kellogg. I am building an N-scale model railroad in my home. My layout will represent the modern operations of the Burlington Northern Santa Fe Railway. It will operate in three subdivisions from Seattle north to Bellingham and east to the Cascade Tunnel. I always envisioned that my layout would include block signals. In fact, I installed signals on the first section of track that I ever laid. However, those signals always display a red aspect because I have never been able to find a signaling system that does not require computer programming in order to pro provide the logic to drive the signals. But now I believe I have found a reasonable solution that provides signal animation relating to the movement of trains but does not require computer programming. The solution has been developed by Model Train Technology of Orlando, Florida. This system is certainly not a prototypical system of signals like you would find on an operating railroad. Let me give you just a couple of examples. Prototype signals on an actual railroad default to a red aspect and then cycle back to yellow and to green under positive control by a dispatcher or interlocking operator. But the model train technology system defaults to green when the signal sensor is clear. It then triggers a red aspect when the signal sensor senses that a train is on the track adjacent to the sensor. Then, when the sensor is cleared, the system automatically cycles from red to yellow and finally back to green. Another example is the sensor does not protect an occupied block. If a train passes a sensor at the beginning of a block and proceeds into the block and clears the sensor, the sensor just senses the presence of the train while the train is adjacent to the sensor and triggers the signal aspect to red, but only so long as the sensor is activated. Once the sensor is cleared and the train has occupied the block, the, cycle, uh, the signal cycles back to yellow and finally to green, subject to the adjustable timing mechanism. But while the train is still occupying the block, the signal can cycle back to green even though the train is still occupying the block that is supposedly protected by the signal. But despite the ways in which this system is not prototypical, it still is a very good system to represent operating signals on a model railroad. When a train passes the sensor, the signal light turns red. When the train clears the sensor, the signal light cycles back to yellow and finally to green. In this way, it is an excellent system to animate signal operation on a model railroad. I built this demonstration module for two reasons. Number one, I wanted to prove to myself that I could install the system. Number two, I wanted to have a way to demonstrate how the system is installed and operated. So let's take a look at the components of the demonstration module. This is the layout surface. The horizontal surface obviously represents the top surface of the layout with the track installed. The system components on this surface would typically be visible on an actual layout. The layout surface is divided into two blocks block A and block B. Signals are located at the beginning of each block. The vertical backboard represents the underside of the layout. The system components on this surface would typically not be visible on an actual layout. The power module provides 5 volt DC power to all of the system components. This power module is sold by Model Train Technology, but other power sources from 5 to 12 volt DC could be used. This is the precision detector that has been developed by Model Train Technology. It's concealed in a, in a trackside electrical cabinet. It emits a, an electronic beam that can be adjusted between 5 millimeters and 150 millimeters 
which is roughly one half inch to 5.75 inches. When the beam is interrupted, the sensor sends a signal to the signal controller and changes the signal aspect to red. When the signal is cleared, then the signal turns back from red to yellow to flashing yellow and to green. The sensor can be set for N scale, HO scale or O scale layouts. This can limit the depth of the signal to the width of the track. The recommended voltage for the precision detector is 5 volts DC but it can run on 12 volts DC. This is the signal controller. This is the brains of the operation. The signal controller receives the input from the precision detector and changes the aspect of the signals accordingly. The recommended voltage for the signal controller is also 5 volts DC, but it can also run on 12 volts DC. There are two types of signal controllers. One type powers LED signal lights. The other type uses fiber optic cable to light the signal lights. The signal controller on my demonstration module is for fiber optic lights. The LED signal can also switch between common anode and common cathode. Either type of signal controller can be powered and controlled via DCC. This is the signal that has been developed by model train technology. The signals can be LED lights or be lighted by fiber optic cable. The signals on my demonstration module are fiber optic lights. The light emitted by the signal controller is white. The lenses on the signal lights are colored red, yellow, or green. The signal at block A is green, indicating that block A is unoccupied. But when the train approaches block A, it passes by the precision detector and interrupts the beam. The signal aspect on the signal for block A immediately turns from green to red. When the train clears the signal, the signal aspect on the signal for block A cycles back from red to yellow to flashing yellow and back to green. I have chosen on this signal to include the flashing yellow cycle because it is prototypical on the BNSF. The length of each cycle can be extended to up to 60 seconds. A train on the adjacent track will not trigger the sensor at block A because the sensor has been set to detect only trains on the nearer, on the nearer track. But if the train proceeds to block B, it will trigger the sensor at block B because that sensor is, is set to detect trains on either track. The signal controller can be adjusted to create nine different patterns for signal colors and cycles. I have the signal controller at block A set for option four which cycles the signal color from red to yellow to flashing yellow and back to green. The signal controller at block B is set for option three, which omits the flashing yellow cycle. This adjustment is done by pressing the button on the front of the signal controller. The timing of the length of the cycle can also be adjusted by a potentiometer on the front of the signal controller. The signal controller has a latching circuit which can be used to keep one block signal from cycling back to green until the train has cleared the precision detector at the following block. Each signal controller has a latching terminal so a wire can be connected from one signal controller to the latching terminal on the next following signal controller. The purpose of that connection is to allow the signal at the first block 
to be controlled by the signal controller at the following block. This is what is meant by latching. If a latching circuit is connected between the signal controllers for blocks A and B, for example, if a train passes the precision detector at block A, it will trigger the signal controller at block A and turn the signal at block A to red. When the train clears the sensor, the signal aspect at block A will cycle from red to yellow or flashing yellow. But if the train proceeds to pass the precision detector at block B, it will trigger the signal controller at block B and turn the signal at block B to red. But until the train clears the precision detector at block B, the signal at block A will not cycle back to green. It will remain at its aspect just before green until the train clears the precision detector at block B. Then the signal at block A will immediately cycle to green. This latching circuit improves the realism of the appearance of the signaling system because it appears that the signal at block A is protecting block A until the sensor is cleared at block B. I recognize that this system for animation of model railroad signals will not satisfy every modeler. For those who have an interest in prototypically correct signals and who have the resources and skills to program the logic required, there are other better systems available. But for someone like myself who does not have the ability or interest to learn to program the signal patterns and who is satisfied with the animation of the signals in a somewhat realistic fashion, this new detection and signaling system from Model Train Technology is worthy of consideration. The system can be adapted to drive crossing signals and can trigger but not power relays to, init to initiate other actions. It is very fast and easy to install. The wiring requirements are very minimal and no soldering is required. The operations manual provided is very clear and the support staff at Model Train Technology is very patient and helpful. I'm very pleased to have discovered the train detection and signal system by Model Train Technology as a practical and realistic animation system for the signals on my model railroad.